Hey mate, I'm Alex. And I'm Gaston. Welcome to Power Mate. This is a place to learn and share about Powerick and Power Platform. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the channel with your friends and colleagues. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to show how to create a copilot in just 10 minutes using Copilot Studio. So whether you are a developer, a business professional, or just someone interested in AI, uh, this kind of a video tutorial is for you. So let's dive right in. Oh, this video is for me then, Alex. So <laughs> okay. that would be great. So so you mean I am going to be able to create my own copilot only in 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I will show you right away. First, uh, let's head over to my machine and to the Copilot Studio dashboard. And so if you don't have the account yet, you can sign up and create your trial. And also, yeah, let me, let me share my screen here. As you can see here, this is like the Copilot Studio homepage. And again, if you have, if you don't have access, if, if your Office 365 account, you don't have an Office 365 account or something, you can sign up for a trial or as we usually mention, you can create your Office 365 developer account and you are going to have access not just to the Copilot Studio, you are going to have access to uh, Power Apps, Power Automate, Fabric and other tools. So yeah, look, you can do that. So first of all, uh, let's create the Copilot. That's okay. This is the Copilot Studio homepage. So let's click on create here. Let's create the Copilot like the traditional way. The other way we have, as you can see here in the middle of the screen, is use Copilot to create a, co a Copilot. But in this case, Let's create the copilot in the traditional way so we can measure that we can effectively create a copilot connected with SharePoint in just a couple of minutes. Okay, so let's create a copilot here, a new copilot. And let's keep that here. We can start uh, again. Let the copilot know what our copilot should do, what the behaviors of our copilot will be. But in this case, we are going to create the out of the box copilot. Just let's click here on the top right hand side. Let's click on create and let's create the copilot. So this is like the how the copilot came by default out of the box. So what we want to do is to add SharePoint and specifically a SharePoint library with some document as the data source. But in Copilot Studio, we name the data source as knowledge basis because we want to use the knowledge basis as our data source for the copilot information. What we need to do is, as you can see here in the middle of the screen, knowledge, and we can click on add knowledge. Uh, a comment here is, as you can see here, allow the AI to use its own general knowledge. This means that we can have enable or disable that. If we enable that, that means uh, if we ask something to the copilot, that copilot has no answer for that, it's going to look in, into the internet like ChatGPT does. Okay, so we are going to disable that because we only want our copilot to look into the uh, SharePoint library or documentation we, we, we want. So now, let's click on Add Knowledge. As you can see here, we have a couple of knowledge here, public website, files, SharePoint is the one we are going to use, database, Fabric for Gaston. So stay tuned because on a couple of episodes, we probably showcase something about that. And then of course you have other uh, knowledge base as SQL, SharePoint Server, SAP, Salesforce, and other two that Power Platform have connections to. In that case, let's use SharePoint here. And here we need to add the link to our SharePoint. Could be the SharePoint site or it could be the SharePoint list or, or library. Let me add here. I have this library here, the furniture fact. Uh, so let's imagine we have like a furniture store in, in our in our case, and we want to ask um, the copilot to be able to answer questions about our furniture product or even like the wood suppliers and all. I have the document here already created. Let me add documents to the library. I have the wood suppliers and the product. Uh, let's, let me show you quickly 
what those documents have inside. This is a super, you know, it's a example, but like modern living furniture store, product catalog, living room collection, look section sofa, uh, amber coffee table, lunch chair, uh, as usual, you no know, different product from a, for a furniture store. And the second one is the wood supplier. As uh, you can infer, is like different companies that uh, supply us to uh, different wood. So you can find furniture manufacturing and wood supplier from UA, United States, New Zealand, uh, Toronto, and different places. So yeah, it's just an example. Okay, so we have our SharePoint library here. So we need to copy that URL here and copy that into our compiler. So our SharePoint list is going to be uh, Gaston Cruz, that is the, the tenant we are using right now, uh, Power Made Copilot Furniture Factory. Okay, so let's click on Add. Let's click on Add again. That could take a couple of seconds to process because uh, as you may know, uh, the copilot, uh, the AI on the back need to index the information of the document to be able to answer us. So, and Alex, one question. Uh, yeah. You can keep adding more data sources, right? So, if, if for my data family, for example, if I need to index a SQL server or a database, you can keep adding more yeah, data sources, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can also, uh, Add again here, okay, let's add uh, SQL or something from Fabric. Uh, and also then, I, I'm going to show th that uh, later, but you can decide which of the knowledge may use depends of conditions, depend of the topic or depend of other stuff. Here, let's click on publish. So that's it, you know, in this case is we just create the copilot and let add the knowledge base. In this case, again, SharePoint with to document that could be SharePoint with thousands of documents with different document libraries and all the stuff. So let's click on publish. Okay. So let's check the topics. Topics is a way how Copilot Studio work. Uh, what the topics ask uh, uh, is like when the user asks for something. That means that the user have an intention. So every topic uh, um, is triggered by the copilot depend of the intention of the user. Okay, just to make a little bit closer why. In this case, um, we are going to use conversional boosting because we are using the knowledge base and, and, and the GPT to generate answer, create generative answers. And in this case, as you can see here, we have data source. And if we click on data source, we can see here what I mentioned before, Gaston, here, search only on selected data sources. So here, this is disabled. That means that it's going to use all data sources we have created. But the, let's say that you only want to use SQL. On this case, SharePoint, you can select your own data source. Okay, let's use this data source or these two or these three or combination, okay? Okay, so let's click on save and let's test it. What are the main features of the coffee table? So as you can see here, say, okay, no, the coffee table features are minimalist design with a rustic touch and blah, blah, blah. And if, as you can see here, uh, also show us the reference. And if I click here, it's going to send me, okay, let's download me the document. Here we have the coffee table description, minimalist design, rustic touch, coffee. So as you can see, it's, this information is taken from the document, okay? If I ask uh, something about the wood suppliers, Okay, let's, let's check like Pacific Lumber Millwork. Let's say Pacific Lumber, where is located Pacific Lumber Millworks? 
Pacific Lumber Mill was located in Auckland, New Zealand. And if you can see here, it's exactly that location, Auckland, New Zealand. So as you can see here, it's pretty, pretty simple in terms of how to create and start adding the information and documents. So uh, if you need extra documentation or you have hundreds of documents, doesn't matter, you can add here, you can just point your Copilot Studio to the, your uh, SharePoint library. And the next step uh, could be uh, just, you know, publish or, or use your uh, demo website. So you can uh, came here. Into the security, for example, and say, OK, authentication could be authenticate with Microsoft. But in case that you want to publish that into your public website or something, you can use no authentication. And that means that uh, you can publish your copilot uh, externally, but that's, that, that doesn't mean that the people is going to have access to your SharePoint library. Shaz is going to have access to the information you publish and mention on your copilot. And also, you can select different channels for the copilot. Uh, as you can see here, this is the last point. You can, after configure security and all, because, okay, I want to publish on Teams, I want to publish on Slack. I want to publish in Telegram. I, I want to use that on my custom website, Facebook, Skype, I got multiple options to use. I created a copilot in like 10 minutes using Copilot Studio. So what do you think, Gaston? Did you find it a little bit useful? Wow, that that was really awesome. It's it's really simple. So it's just a further simple step. So I, I feel that this is this is going to be really great for even non-technical people. You don't need kind of technical okay. deep skills to make this happen. So I really find this this really helpful. Uh, so for the PowerMates family, if you found this tutorial helpful, please don't forget to like this video and, you know, give us all the comments and on exactly. how you've been trying so far these kind of uh, uh, amazing solutions with Copilot Studio. Yeah, and lastly, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and join us on this journey. Together, let's unlock the full potential of Power Platform and Microsoft Power. Yeah.